What's good, YouTube? You're back on S Motorsports. Today, we're gonna be slamming the pistons into the 6.0 LS build. guys so like I said we're today we're gonna be installing the pistons and I got everything laid out here as you can see I'll show you what I got in a second but we're gonna be installing the pistons uh, to get this basically as a short block and maybe some other stuff which I'll probably break up into other videos I think today is just gonna be gapping the rings uh, or just checking the gap because they're already pre gapped rings and then we're going to be installing the pistons. Those are all cleaned, ready to go. We just gotta assemble the rings uh, onto the pistons. And then we're also gonna be checking the uh, rod clearance. And as well, we are going to be installing some ARP rod bolts as some extra insurance. I know there's probably some, I'll catch some flack of, oh, you don't need that, or maybe you do need that. It was just kind of a easy thing to do to make sure that the bolts aren't the failure point and if nothing else this is this isn't really going to help with at, you know being able to add more horsepower on a gen 3 rotating system but this is more of a rpm uh thing where you can turn some higher rpms with a little bit more safety factor so that's why i ended up going with the arp rod bolts but today we're going to be getting the pistons installed today we're going to be checking the rings like I said, to make sure those are gapped properly. And I'll show you what gap I'm gonna be running, basically manufacturer specification, as well as checking the rod main clearance. I'll let you know what that is as well with the plastic gauge. So really there's not much to it. I'm gonna set you up on the tripod. I'm gonna put all the rings in and gap them all at once and then kind of assign them to a piston uh, and a specific hole that I want. So that's basically it. So let's have at her. So first I should probably go over what I ended up getting for parts and whatnot. Um, so like I said, I already have the ARP rod bolts, which are for, you know, the LS engines, the cracked rod design. I have my new, or I shouldn't say new, I have my pistons all cleaned up, ready to go. Uh, so we have the, let's see, new piston. Uh, this is the new one that I got off eBay. So that one's good to go, that one looks fine. That one's for the number seven hole um which was the one that was locked up and bent so this is the new piston here um which it is i made sure it is the exact same design in terms of uh domes uh which i ordered one and it was slightly wrong but i just sold that one and then we also got yeah male piston rings they're just basically i think they're basically stock replacement rings they're molly coated i believe so you know just kind of a high performance stock replacement piston. I got Clevite, uh, you know, connecting rod bearings, which is pretty standard. I think these are the same as small block Chevy. I mean, they're tried and true on that as well. Um, and then I have this Summit uh, ring compressor, uh, which I've had for like 10 years when I rebuilt the small block Chevy in the Trans Am the first time. That's a four inch bore. This is a four inch bore. So this should work perfect. And then, uh, yeah, all the links will be in the description for the parts that I'm using, you know, the ARP, this, the, the Summit ring compressor, because this is pretty slick. I'll show you that as well. Um, it's not like one of those clamp to get, I don't know, it's pretty slick. Um, and then as well as the rings and connecting rods. So I'll get you set up on the tripod and let's have at her. Okay guys, I got you set up on the tripod. So one thing I wanted to point out in the piston rings they do have it marked, you know, bottom groove oil ring, and they have it marked on the box. I don't know if you can see that top groove and second groove, so you know which ring, you know, is for which one, because these are kind of hard to tell uh, which one is for which. Obviously the oil ring is pretty self-explanatory, but so what I'm gonna do is go through and gap all the top rings first. I'll put them all in and then uh, make sure the gap, and I'm looking for basically 18 to 20 thousandths for the top ring and then roughly 22 thousandths on the second ring. And you wanna make sure that you have the symbol facing up 
Um, uh, definitely on installation, but that is what is, it's either a symbol or a dot, that's the up direction. So basically I'm taking the feeler gauge. I'm gonna start with 18 to make sure I have enough and you just slide it in the gap once you uh, basically get the piston ring flat with the piston and double check that you at least have 18 thousandths clearance. I think the minimum that it says is 16, um, but basically I'm going 18, which those are all good. We'll double check it at 20 as well. So doing that, you can tell that a few of them are a little tighter with the 20,000. So what I'm gonna do is, I wanna make sure the back two, um, cause those are known to typically get a little hotter. I wanna make sure that those are, have a slightly bigger gap. So this one, this one is good. See like, this is a, this is a pretty loose one. So I'm gonna swap that to the back. All right, now I got them all where I want them. The, 20 style feeler gauge fits in all of them relatively easy definitely easier on the back to the front ones a little bit tighter but it still fits in uh, if you make sure you get it exactly straight so i think we are good to go so now i'm going to take these and assign them to a piston and then we'll do the second ones same process okay so now i'm moving on now that i checked all the gaps on the rings and i'm happy with it uh, we're moving on to assembling the rings onto the pistons and you have to also make sure that you are orientating the rings in the correct location on the piston. Now I'm gonna install the rings and then I will double check the orientation before you slide it into the bore, um, but it's probably easier if you can get them close uh, when you're first assembling it. So I'm gonna knock through all these and then we'll get to installing them. Next, I'm gonna crack open the ARP connecting rod bolts and get those swapped out in all of them as well so they are ready to go in then because I got all the rings assembled. Uh, so this is the next step. It's worth noting that the ARP bolts are slightly longer than the factory bolts for more thread engagement. We'll just double check that we don't bottom out, which we shouldn't because it comes through on the other side. So we should be good, but just something to pay attention to. We are also gonna load the Male or Clevite uh, connecting rod bearings as well. As you see, brand new, nice and no scratches. So we're gonna get these loaded in so we're all ready to go. All right guys, I got the pistons all ready to go in. So the next, we're gonna use this Summer Racing uh, ring compressor to get the pistons installed. I'm gonna start with, what, number eight, and then work my way this way, and uh, vice versa on the other side. And so like I said, this ring compressor is pretty slick. It's tapered, uh, so it helps you get the ring started, and then it goes to the four inch bore. So you need a specific one for, depending on what engine size you're working, engine size you're working with. So this is a 6.0, it's got a four inch bore, and I got this one for a uh, small block, 350 as well, because that has a four inch fork. So we'll show you how it works. You basically just put it on there and I'm gonna grab a piston. I also have got this Driven uh, assembly oil. I'll put a link in the description for this as well. And basically I'm just gonna oil up the rings uh, and the pin, make sure that's all good to go. Okay, I gave it a good dab of oil. So we will smear that around all over this is a good time to double check your uh, ring orientation as well which is top ring so and you have to orientate the piston the dot towards the front so it'll go in like this and then we got the top ring here towards the bottom second ring is towards the top i think we got this baby greased up so once you got it started, then you can drop it in. I will say that oil is super sticky. 
we'll grab a soft mallet to kind of bump it down and that will guide the uh, rod down. Just like that, it goes in. Okay, again guys, we're gonna check the clearance on this rod, make sure we're good with our plastic gauge. So I will grab one and you can lay it down right on the crankshaft there. And then we will tighten her up to check the clearance. I'm gonna bring you guys in real close. Let's see. So I'd say that looks like a smidge bigger than two thou. So definitely not one and a half, definitely closer to two. So I think we're good. All right, now it's just a repeat for the rest of the pistons. I'm gonna knock them all out. And just like that, we got a short block assembled. So I got everything buttoned up. I got all the pistons in. Everything is gapped properly. The only thing that we have left to do is torque everything down to spec. I didn't torque them. I just kind of uh, lightly tightened everything so I could spin it. And now I'm going to go through. And since we have the ARP bolts uh, in the connecting rods, we have to follow their specification for torquing the, the caps. And I will say, guys, this Summit uh, ring compressor is worth its weight in gold. That works flawlessly. So they include an instruction sheet uh, with the bolts and it basically says torque these with the uh, lubricant provided. The ARP Ultra Torque Lubricant. Um, you have to use that on the threads, a little bit on the threads and underneath the head to 40 foot pounds. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow their recommendation. Well guys, that's it for today. We got everything buttoned up on the short block. So stay tuned as in the next one, hopefully in the build series, we get to installing the front timing chain and miscellaneous parts as I picked up some uh, special parts on this. As you can see, my block doesn't have a certain something here. And stay tuned for the camshaft that I picked to find out as I think it's a pretty good one and I think you guys will like it as well. So stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.